Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Sapiens Education. So, for more details of our institute, you can visit our website www.sapienseducation.com. So, this is the part of the chapter uh, thermal properties of the matter. Okay, and uh, this is I hope by this fifth part where I am going to discuss about the following point. Okay, uh, that is your one of the point is your latent heat change in a state of a change in a change of a state as well as condensation evaporation sublimation heating curve and triple point okay so these are the point uh, i am going to discuss in a details more elaborative more manner so try to concentrate here now before we uh, there is a term latent heat what is latent heat so before latent heat what do you know that normally heat when we tell about heat so it means that whenever you will um, give a heat on any object so what will happen temperature will rise right temperature of body will rise body will rise so this is known as heat but what happens when temperature does not la uh, rise so the uh, let us discuss about the latent heat see again i am telling you whenever you will apply of heat so what will happen temperature of the object will increase start increasing right now what happened in latent heat what happened it is the heat absorb or release during the phase change of the body of a substance and it is called the latent heat and in this what happened no temperature is rise are there no temperature rise so when there is no temperature rise in spite of in spite of being heat is being applied is known as that type of heat is known as latent heat for example if you talk about the ice and this ice is at a zero degree celsius how much degree celsius zero degree celsius when you apply a heat so what will happen heat will absorb but as you as you will keep that uh, thermometer so what will happen as you keep the thermometer so what will happen you will see that no temperature increase increment right no temperature rise no temperature rise right so it means that where this heat went so it this type of heat has been used during phase change actually i am uh, uh, or uh, anything heat is get uh, converting solid to liquid so there is a cha change in a phase so when there is a change in a phase is it means that heat has been used in changing the phase without rising the temperature and it is also known as hidden heat or latent heat so hidden because it is just uh, your heat will not appear at all but you will see that there is only change in a phase so finally it uh, latent heat is uh, uh, defined as l and l is your latent heat of the particular substance and this is equal to q by m so how much heat is being required for uh, converting uh, any uh, changing a phase right so i hope you have understood again i am making you understand that when heat is uh, see here when you see that there is an object or uh, there is a water and all and if you apply heat so what will happen temperature will rise but as soon as but as soon as what happen uh, if if uh, there is a, some uh, objects or any ice are there and uh, you have seen that temperature at of the ice is 0 degree celsius and after that you start applying a heat so as soon as you apply starting um, you apply a heat so what will happen it uh, it should must rise the temperature but we have seen that there is no rise in a temperature so where this heat has gone so it this heat has converted the solid body into liquid body and that that is why there is a change in a phase so whenever there is a heat required to change in a phase so that amount of heat is known as latent heat so latent heat of a particular substance is equal to uh, l l is defined as latent heat and latent heat is equal to q by m that is heat required divided by mass of the substance okay so i hope you have understood now the clarity of a latent heat now let us uh, let us uh, see about types of heat how many types of heat are there so there are two types of heat are there so latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization so whenever whenever solid gets converted into liquid then the heat required on the latent heat required is known as latent heat of fusion that is quantity of heat required again you read the definition quantity of heat required to change 1 kg of mass from solid to liquid state as it is melting is known as latent heat of fusion now if i am talking about latent heat of vaporization so you are having a liquid right 
and what you have you start giving heat so you see that it is already 100 degrees celsius for a water so after that what happen water gets converted into vapor vapor so as water gets converted into vapor so what will happen so the quantity of heat required to change 1 kg of mass from liquid to vapor at its boiling point at its boiling point is known as vaporization so when we melt melt means only fusion so when there is a heat required to melt heat required to change the solid to liquid is known as latent heat of fusion but when it is uh, used for vaporizing purpose when liquid gets converted into vapor so we will use this as a latent heat of vaporization at all right so latent heat you have understood that is heat and heat where no temperature change has been seen okay but only heat will be absorbed or either it will be uh, absorbed right it will be absorbed but no change in the temperature at all got it so i hope you have understood this three term latent heat if you have understood definitely you will able to use this latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization so when we talk about latent heat of uh, fusion or vaporization so the amount 1 kg 1 kg we will take 1 kg for example let us consider again we, let us consider let us consider uh, there is a uh, let us take uh, this sketch okay let us this is your water uh, or a solid how much kg 1 kg how much kg 1 kg 1 kg of ice is there now you apply a heat so suppose 100 joule has been applied and after applying a 100 joule of uh, energy so 1 kg of ice has been converted into water 1 kg of water that is liquid and the temperature earlier was zero and after that also uh, if it gets converted into uh, liquid water so it, its temperature is also still zero degree celsius only so there is a no change in a temperature the amount of heat required that is 100 joule is called latent heat of fusion okay now similarly for vaporization you take one kg of water and one kg of water at 1 kg of water at 100 degree celsius at 100 degree celsius now you start heating so after that what happened after some time you will see that all the water gets converted into vapor and if you measure the temperature of vapor it has 100 degree celsius it means that the quantity of heat required to change the 1 kg of mass from liquid to vapor at its boiling point is known as latent heat of vaporization so i hope it is now very much clear normal heat raise the temperature but latent heat does not raise the temperature it only change the state right it only change the state i hope you have understood uh, right now now what is change in a state so before that you need to understand what is change in a state so let us see here melting point if i am talking about melting point so when heat is supplied solid change into liquid and the temperature at which it's this happen is called melting point so solid gets converted into liquid is known as melting point it is very basic definition i think you have studied in earlier classes now what is freezing point when a heat is released from liquid and liquid changes to solid so liquid gets converted into solid and after cooling then the temperature at which liquid gets converted into solid is known as freezing point and that is zero degree for zero degree for water we know this zero degree for water right so i hope you have understood this uh, this is very simple melting point as well as freezing point okay now what is condensation condensation when a vapor is cooled so you know that uh, atmosphere has a vapor so or a cloud is in the form of vapor so when it is being condensed so it will come down by the droplets it means that vapor when cooled so it will gets converted into liquid okay so the process is called condensation process process is, uh, in which vapor gets converted into liquid after cooling is known as condensation process now what is evaporation so conversion of liquid into gas so if there is a liquid and if i want to convert it into gas or it will automatically get get converted into a uh, gas so this is known as evaporation so we can say that there is an evaporation so you know that uh, so many lakes and uh, has been evaporated so the temperature at which the liquid converts into vapor is called the boiling point you know this okay but evaporation it is not like that it evaporation only occur in a boiling point it is not like that because in case of water water 
you will see that it is not necessary that there is a requirement of a boiling point okay so you know that boiling point is 100 degree celsius right but you will never see that uh, 100 degree celsius of a temperature at a lake so the top layer of the the lake what happens top layer of the lake of the water will rise and in con gets converted into vapor so this process is also known as evaporation so it is not necessary that every time you will get uh, you, every time you will uh, require a boiling point at all okay but the process or the phenomena in which liquid gets converted into a gas is known as evaporation phenomena okay so i hope you have understood this now what is sublimation so sublimation when a solid directly converts into gas then it's called sublimation solids gets converted into vapor or gas after heating then it is known as sublimation so what is the example camphor camphor you know solid ice uh, carbon ice you know so these are the example carbon ice uh, you know sawdust you know these are the example where solid gets directly converted into vapor okay so the process of the um, process in which solids directly converts into gas is called the sublimation okay so i hope you have understood this topic now let's uh, discuss about the another topic that is heating curve okay so this very important curve uh, i have especially prepared for you so try to understand this uh, curve okay so this you know that this is your temperature above and this is your heat is been added so let us consider let us consider it is your minus 10 degree celsius okay this is your minus 10 degree celsius so i am starting from minus 10 degree celsius so when let us take an example of ice only take an example of ice which is at how much uh, temperature ice is at minus 10 degree celsius now you have up started applying a heat so what will happen if you apply a heat so what will happen its temperature will rise okay so it temperature will start rising uh, and uh, it started from minus 10 degree celsius till till a freezing point so that is uh, you will get up to minus uh, my, uh, up to 0 degree celsius so the heat added in this is called normal heat we can say normal heat right because because what is happening here when we apply a heat so your temperature is start rising now as soon as it attains the 0 degree celsius after that what happens after that a to b let us see here a to b a to b or a to b so here suppose this is your o to a so before that i will discuss about o to a okay so it's uh, your o to a and let us uh, consider like this o to a okay o to a cup so o to a what is happening o to a ice was there and ice has ice is there okay and it has minus 10 degree celsius so when we apply a heat so when we apply a heat so temperature gone rising and up to the up to up to 0 degree celsius 0 degree celsius now till now this is your normal heat till now this is your normal heat okay normally heat we are normal heat is there now after that why we start applying a heat at all so we have seen that using a temperature red, um, thermometer so it is only 0 degree celsius but it is start melting so which type of heat is being used here so i hope you have understood now which type of heat is there so for o, a b it is your for a b it is your latent heat latent heat is it a vaporization or a vaporization or fusion so definitely solids get converted into liquid solid gets converted into liquid right here solid gets converted into liquid at 0 degree celsius so we can see that a to b it is your latent heat of vaporization latent heat of a vaporization okay so this part this part we can directly say that this part is your latent heat of vaporization this part is your latent heat of vaporization latent heat of vaporization vaporization okay so latent heat of vaporization now let us consider about b to b to c okay so if i am talking about b to c so b to c what is happening normal heat is there 
normal heat is there right so temperature rises temperature rises got it so i hope you have understood this i hope you have understood this okay right i hope you have understood this got it b2c normal heat is there so b2c it is your in the liquid form now tell me what is all about the c2d c2d what is happening so if you tell here c2d before that let us consider the state let us consider the state tell me tell me here it is your solid state but when we when there is a uh, there is a chance of melting so it is your solid plus liquid but as there is a rise in the temperature so there is only liquid phase now if i am talking about c2d it is your what happened here you are adding heat see heat is being increased at this point heat is been increased but no temperature is changing see here this is your boiling point so no temperature is um, increasing at this phase c2d no temperature is increasing a to b no temperature is increasing so wherever in spite of applying a heat no temperature is increasing at this point you can understand a to b or c to d c to d latent heat of latent heat of it is your vaporization a to b i think it is your latent heat of uh, fusion sorry here you need to uh, tell a to b it is your latent heat of fusion sorry for that okay a to latent heat of fusion okay but when we talk about c to d c to d it has been converted into c to d it has been converted into gas form so can we write here latent heat of vaporization at all vaporization so how many zones we have got latent heat so two zones a to b a to b and c to d both the have a latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of fusion so in this a to b see here no rise in the temperature from when uh, we are applying a heat in spite of being applied in a heat so uh, heat is being added no temperature is rising right and after that after that when it completely converted into gas when it completely converted into gas what is happening here when it completely converted into gas what is happening here after adding a heat so its temperature start rising okay its temperature start rising got it so this is the way you can understand the heating curve this is the way you can understand the heating curve so if i will talk about o to a o to a suppose its temperature is from minus 10 degree celsius to 0 degree celsius so here normal heat is required normal heat is required now a to b a to b 0 degree celsius temperature is constant temperature is constant so heat is your latent heat latent heat either it is your latent heat of uh, vaporization or uh, latent heat of uh, fusion so definitely fusion here solid plus liquid states are there because solid gets converted into liquid right now if we talk about b to c so b to c there is a temperature rise from 0 to 100 degree celsius or any boiling point if you are taking another liquid so it will be boiling point at all okay boiling point and 0 degree will be freezing point right so b to c what we are thinking so temperature is rising here temperature is rising so if temperature is rising it means that it is your if temperature is rising it means that normal heat is added normal heat is added right normal heat is added now if consider c to d so c to d temperature uh, that is 100 degree celsius or boiling point remain constant remain constant so for this c to d so the temp uh, you have uh, applied a heat and this heat is called heat is called latent heat of fusion heat of fusion right and after that after that what happened after that after that you can say that this is your d2 e it is your superheating it is your superheating so it is not in a syllabus but still you should know that after you if you uh, after vapor if you will heat a vapor up after 100 degrees celsius or after a expected boiling point then you will tell that this is your superheating at all okay so i hope you have understood this phase diagram so this is what all about phase diagram 
okay now i will talk about a um, triple point of water so let us consider what is triple point of water it is the state at which three phase of a substance namely solid liquid and gas coexist coexist means what at this point solid you are having a solid as well as liquid as well as gas okay so this uh, you know that triple point of water is the temperature the triple point means a point will come where you will find solid as well as liquid as well as gas so from figure so figure here you can see that see this is the pressure and this is your temperature so when pressure is equal to 0.46 cm of mercury and temperature is equal to 273.16 kelvin when this point arises where you will able to find solid as well as gas as well as liquid see here this is the curve right so here you will see that solid gets converted into gas gas gets converted into solid and here you see in this uh, solid gets converted into liquid and liquid gets converted into gas solid all three are in uh, convertible see here and from liquid to uh, gas and gas to liquid so all are interconnected to each other so this is the point where all three three phase solid liquid as well as gas will coexist means it will remain at there so this is the definition of triple point of water and from figure and from a curve you can understood that what is the triple point of water okay so i hope you have understood now now let us solve one of the most important question and um, example question i will solve here so basically a separate numerical i will make a separate video but here here let us uh, uh, do one example okay do one example first of all try to understand that when 0.1 0.15 uh, kg of ice at 0 degree celsius is mixed see here a 0.15 kg of ice is there ice is there right at temperature how much temperature it has 0 degree celsius okay it has 0 degree celsius is mixed with water mixed with 0.3 kg of water so i have a one bucket of water so it has 0.3 kg and its temperature temperature is 50 degree celsius right in a container and resulting in the temperature resulting temperature that is final temperature is how much when they both are mixed so what is happening so final temperature will be equal to 6.7 degree celsius now calculate the heat of the fusion latent heat of the fusion so that it we want latent heat so how you will find latent heat okay so first of all when both will be mixed so what will happen what will happen can we write here heat loss heat lost is equal to heat gain so first of all first of all we have we have final temperature as we have uh, we have final temperature is how much final temperature is 6.70 degree celsius now initial temperature i am talking about uh, um, water right water or uh, water so can we write here for uh, water so i will talk about water let us uh, i think uh, you have uh, understood the question right so let us uh, take uh, separately here so separately i have taken here um, um, let us consider this is a water so this is your water heat lost by water so how you will find heat lost by water heat lost by water so how you will find so this will be we will use q that is equal to q is equal to mc into change in temperature so what is m mass of the water is how much 0.3 kg into specific heat of water how much it has 4186 into um, change in temperature is from 50 degree celsius to 6.7 degree celsius when we calculate this so we will get how much we will get the value 5 4 3 Seven six point one four. So this is heat lost by water. Okay. Now heat heat gain by heat gain by ice. Okay. So first of all, you try to understand 
first of all the heat will be heat will be heat will be required for melting that is q latent heat is how much m into l right because heat required for melting and after that some heat will require for to raise the temperature because see here what is happening ice was there so heat has been at first supplied for melting right and after melting what happens after melting its, its temperature start rising as you have seen in a curve so you see here before a melting so it is not possible to rise see here so if you are giving heat so what will happen it will first melt after that there will be a rise of a temperature so use this uh, method so uh, how much heat is required for melting so you know that uh, heat required for melting is equal to q is equal to ml q is equal to ml right so q is equal to ml so ma mass of the ice is how much 0 0.15 kg into latent heat we don't know that is the thing we need to latent heat of fusion we want right so this is what latent heat of fusion okay so now let us uh, let us uh, consider let us consider heat re uh, heat requires to okay i have to i need to insert one slide okay let us uh, yeah yeah sorry hmm. okay hmm. Now see, till now you have understood. Now heat required to raise the temperature. Okay, heat required to raise the temperature. Heat required to raise the temperature of ice water. Temperature of ice water because ice has been converted into water now. So it is how much? That is equal to Q is equal to M C del T. So mass is how much so let us see here mass is your mass of the ice is how much 0.15 okay no issue at all 0 0.15 what is the specific heat of water that is same uh, that is equal to 4186 i hope right 4186 okay 4186 it is your 4186 into what is the change in the temperature what is change in the temperature okay change in temperature is how much so earlier it has zero and rise in temperature is how much see ice when converted into water ice when converted into water so it has zero degree celsius and after that is its temperature rise to 6.7 degree celsius so final temperature is 6.7 minus initial temperature was zero degree celsius okay so when we multiply this and when we calculate this so you will get 4206.93 right so this is the heat required to raise the temperature uh, of the wa ice water so as per the calorimetry principle heat heat lost is equal to heat gain heat gain so how much heat gain uh, and how much heat lost so first of all heat lost is how much so this is what heat lost is so this is what heat lost is that is equal to 543 heat lost is equal to 54376.14 joule and heat gain is how much so first of all we need to add this heat gain that is 0 0.15 into lf because this ice is gaining the heat right so this is equal to 0 0.15 so 0 0.15 into lf that is latent heat of fusion plus this heat has been gained by the ice water so that is 4206.93 so when we calculate this so finally you will get lf lf as you can also calculate by your own so finally you will get lf is equal to 3.34 into 10 to power 5 joule per kg kelvin per kg okay per kg kelvin okay right so per kg it will be per kg only right per kg okay so this is what you will get answer okay so i hope you have understood this all phenomena and uh, you can go and revise and all the topic and if you are getting any problem if you want me to make uh, any specific video or a specific topic and if you want more details then you can just uh, comment in the comment section so that i will make you understand more clearly okay so i hope this is uh, enough for your class 11th level okay
latent heat we have completed change in state we have conducted condensation evaporation sublimation all are easy but the heating point and triple point is very much important so in heating point you have understood now you have understood now what is a what is a heat uh, uh, latent heat what is the simple heat what is latent heat of vaporization what is melting point where see here in latent heat no temperature is rising but as soon as you will give in this region see here temperature is rising right so in this region see here in this region temperature is rising in this region temperature is rising but as soon as you are coming in latent heat of zone, zone so temperature is not rising at all so this is what we want to discuss uh, we have discussed at all triple point you have understood with the diagram and uh, hope uh, you have enjoyed this session so if you have any query again i am telling you please ask in the comment section and if you want regular videos please subscribe so that you will get regular updated video thank you thank you for watching my video